<laughs> it's funny. Oh, hi folks, I'm Rob, this is Nathan, and this is Two Guys in a Ride. Today we're going to take a tour of this 2013 Mercedes-Benz E350 4Matic. I'm going to take you around the outside, show you the styling, talk about the wheel and tire combination, show you the front end, the back end, what's in the trunk, and most importantly, what's under the hood. And later, Nathan is going to take us on a tour of the inside and talk about the fit, the finish, and the comfort, and show you all the technology that's built into this vehicle. Finally, we're going to take it out on the road and give you our impression of its handling, its comfort, its acceleration, and its braking. But before we do that, take a moment to subscribe to our channel, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Come on, let's take a ride! For 2013, the E-Class Mercedes-Benz is available as a sedan, coupe, wagon, or convertible. The exterior design is sleek and attractive. The E300, E350, and E400 models all feature 17-inch alloy wheels, a sunroof, rain-sensing wipers, and auto-dimming side mirrors. They also feature automatic headlights, LED running lights, and a powered liftgate for the wagon models. The E350 gets a power-folding roof, the E550 adds larger 18 wheels, and the E63 AMG comes standard with headlight washers, unique exterior trim, and the wagon version receives a panoramic sunroof. All E63 AMGs are now equipped with a premium two package as standard, adding hard drive navigation, heated and cooled front seats, adaptive high beam assist, keyless go, and more. Standalone options for the E63 AMG include 19 inch forged alloy wheels and carbon fiber trim. The E400 comes with the same gasoline engine and adds an electric motor with 27 horsepower and 207 foot-pound of torque. It's only available as a rear-wheel drive and estimated fuel economy is 21 city, 31 highway. All models feature the 7-speed automatic transit mission except for the E63 AMG. For the E350 Bluetech, Mercedes adds a turbo diesel 3-liter V6 engine that produces 210 horsepower. The E550 receives a larger twin-turbo 407 horsepower, 4.7-liter V8 engine that produces 443 foot-pound of torque. The E63 AMG receives a 518 horsepower, 5.5-liter V8 engine that makes 516 foot-pound of torque. The E63 AMG receives a 518 horsepower, 5.5 liter V8 engine that makes 516 foot-pound of torque. Here we can see the Byzeon headlights, both high and low beam, incandescent side markers, and although they're not on right now, only during driving, uh, these are our uh, LED daytime running lights. Outside rear view mirror side marker lamps as well. Taking a look out back, we can see in the trunk, but first we'll take a look at the rear view camera. And you can see there's 15.9 cubic feet of storage. This vehicle comes with the spare tire, so you don't have to worry with a fix-a-flat kit. And also, nice feature of this car, they add a convenience tray, and this convenience tray holds up to 20 pounds of jugs or groceries or things that could roll around in your trunk that you want to keep secure. It's kind of cool, just put something right in, push it down, holds them in place. You can even scoot it around so you can add more groceries in the back. When you get home, take out your groceries, push the button, pops right back up out of way, slide it in, and you're done. LED tail lights and LED high mounted third brake light. But the cool thing I like is that their tail lights have this neat little sculptured spoiler to help keep the back side of the tail lights clean. Right through here. The E350 comes standard with a V6 naturally aspirated 302 horsepower engine with 276 foot-pound of torque. Can go all the way up to a V8 with 519 horsepower in the E63 AMG. This is the Mercedes-Benz key fob. It has the panic button, lock, unlock, and trunk. All you have to do to get into the car is when you, with the key on your person, just take and slide your hand behind 
the handle, Mercedes-Benz has a sensor, and simply open the door. To lock the car as you're leaving, you can either use the key fob to manually push the button, or you could just simply swipe your hand across a little sensor on the outside. That sensor works on all four doors and the trunk. All right, so on the inside of the Mercedes, uh, you'll notice here right at the door, they've got the typical Mercedes uh, seat controllers. But the one thing that's, that's really nice about this is you've got a headrest controller, uh, which is very nice. You've also got a three-position memory seat, and then your standard window buttons, window lockout, and mirror control, and then your trunk release is down here. And on the steering wheel, you've got uh, two controls left and right. The, on the right side, you have simple up and down volume plus mute, and then a phone on and off. And then you have the voice command button if you want to do activate things by speech. Back of the steering wheel, we've got two paddle wheels. We've got uh, shift up, or shift down and shift up. And then you've got a controller over here for your center screen, digital uh, information screen on the dash. So looking at the infotainment, uh, gauge in the middle you've got controlling it with your arrows uh, you got trip which gives you basically your, your miles per hour here and your um, gear selectors you go to navigation you can get um, your direction like a compass or uh, if you have something programmed in the gps it'll actually give you your next turn uh, going over it here and then you can get audio and you can control that from here um, we can change stations and so forth or sources if we want uh, over here you got telephone and over here you got the driver assist stuff which is really neat. This thing is uh, just loaded with equipment so you've got um, attention assistant, ESP, blind spot assistant, lane keeping assistant um, uh, which are all really great safety features. And then you've got the service settings and then you've got the system settings that you can go through and change your different on your instrument lights, your, your vehicle uh, Convenience settings, um, reset things back to the factory setting. Over here in the command center, we have several functions. You've got your radio, of course, your disks, navigation, telephone, um, all displayed up here. There's also a backup camera, which is activated when you shift into reverse. And then you've got a set of manual controls over here, as well as over here for running the, the stereo system the navigation and then down here you have air conditioning and heating but my favorite thing down here is this silver rotary knob this controls everything up on your screen so all you have to do like for instance if i want to zoom out or zoom in is just rotate that knob and if i want to go back to something i've got a back button and then a clear button to clear out a search if i've done one if i tap down on the silver button i get a whole menu up here that shows up that I can then scroll through. I can go to guide, traffic, position, destination, or if I click up, this is like a this is like a little mouse. Then I can go to these functions up here, which I think is really cool. Um, All right, so on the Mercedes-Benz E350, they've got a dual climate control system, and right now it's uh, uh, individualized so that I can lower my side or the passenger can raise theirs individually because the zone button's on. Once I turn the zone button off both these numbers will match the drivers and then I can raise both sides myself. Um, you've of course got auto climate control, you've got the front defrosters, you've got your rear defrosters, air conditioning, max air conditioning, recirculation, and then of course turning the system off. Now in addition to that you've got the mode buttons and one of the things I like is that you know it disappears after a while it's just a black screen and doesn't show up. Um, so here's your fan, you get a nice graphic there, and then after a while, when it's not been touched, it'll disappear. Alright, so up here are some of my favorite buttons. I'll start with the heated seats. So there are three levels, and then they will um, automatically um, start at three and then go down to one as you, and when it's cold. But my two favorite buttons to play with are these two. Now this one, when you push, will lower the rear headrests, and this one will raise or lower the rear sunshade screen. Over here, you got the center console. And I really like this design. If you just lift up right here, 
the cover split open and you've got about a four, four, four or five inch deep uh, chamber that's uh, you know about a foot long. You can fit pretty much most anything you would fit in a normal armrest holder in the front. You can also close one side and keep one side open so the passenger can get things without disturbing the driver's arm. And then up in the front here is your uh, glove box. Glove box. And the one thing I really like about this is the felt second felt shelf that's right up here. Also, you have a little air conditioner in your glove compartment. Now, that is some class and finesse there. Down here in the center console, you've got a dual chambered receptacle underneath this cover. I like the way Mercedes has made this uh, look like two covers, uh, yet they're, not, they're one. So you just take and push this one to the first notch it stays there, you've got your cup holders. And then if you push it one more time, you get access to an ashtray and a 12-volt um, outlet, uh, cigarette lighter. And then um, you put, give it one more push and it completely closes on itself. This is, I should mention, this is also where you get your economy mode and sport mode driving button right here. Then the last one. Well, now this is sitting in the lap of luxury right here. I'm very comfortable. The driver's seat is where I left it when I was in the front, and that was comfortable for me. And I have got inches worth of leg room in the front here. Mercedes has designed the rear of the seat so that it actually is shaved off on the sides where your legs and knees would normally be, and is a little thicker in the center. It also has two uh, map pockets that are nice. And then over here is your uh, rear air vents, and you've got a fan control. And then down here, you've got another ashtray and lighter. But that is really comfortable. It's, it's really nice back here. Okay. And then right here, you've got a uh, center armrest that if you pull down, and then you just stick your hand under here, lift it up. You've got a little cubby hole here to put some things in. Not real super deep, but it's nice. This is the nice feature right here. You have your cup holders. Okay, so we're gonna take a drive in the Mercedes and get some uh, driving impressions here. Yep, There's almost, a road over there. Yeah, almost took out a garbage can there. Oh, How about right. that? You know, nighttime <laughs> driving is a fun experience. <laughs> driving uh, you turn all the lights on in the car experience. and it's, yeah, it, it makes for an interesting ride. Yeah, kids, don't do this at home. They no. say not to ride with the interior light on just for safety so you can see out. And I can vouch for that. It is a lot harder to see out, but Turn we're out. driving Notice at night. Notice I'm not driving with the light on. <laughs> I'm just sitting with the light on. I'm one of those annoying passengers that has their 50-inch iPhone and their, yet, you know, the brightness is shining right at you. Passenger. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. And going down the highway. One thing I noticed right away, we're driving over a little ice and snow. It is in Minnesota, by the way. Uh, but the vehicle is extremely quiet. Uh, you're very isolated from the highway. The steering is easy and precise. It's nicely weighted. Uh, the um, I don't want to do it right now, but the throttle response is uh, really quick. And uh, once I get off the snow and ice uh, in a dry patch, I'll go ahead and um, try that out for you and let you know my feelings. Nate, what do you think about the ride? I like the ride. Um, you're absolutely right. It is very quiet. Um, there's very little road noise uh, coming in. And, um, you know, it's uh, the seats are comfortable. Um, the, the backs are nicely bolstered on the sides. You know, Mercedes has always been known, as far as I know, uh, for their seat comfort. And these seats are a delight. I'll tell you, I, I've ridden in many different vehicles, and you can adjust these seats all types of ways, Just and it just feels great. You can ride in this vehicle all day long and not even get tired. They got a lot of support, which is nice. Okay, we're on a dry patch, but I'm going uh, about 55 right now. And uh, is that the cruise? Cruise take up is really quick uh, to go down on the cruise. One of the cool things about this, to show you the cruise control, if you just tap it easily down one or up one, it increases or decreases your speed limit by, or your speed uh, by one mile per hour. If you give it a hard push up or down, it'll decrease or increase your speed by five miles per hour. So it's kind of cool if you want to, you know, jump 
up real quick or just subtly go up a little faster or come back down uh, and decrease your speed a little faster. It's kind of cool how it does that. Okay. That's nice. Mine only does one or, you know, one mile an hour, two miles an hour. All right. I'm going to pull to a spot here where we can turn around and I want to get to a point where I can uh, show you the throttle response on this. You should put vehicle. it in sport mode. Oh, definitely. I'll switch it over to sport mode. We are in sport mode. Standing still at the side of a road. <laughs> Don't know if you can really tell on the video what this is going to be like, but um, I'm going to try it right now. And we're at 60. That quick. All right. And Ethan went. As you can see, <laughs> the acceleration on this particular vehicle is amazing. It put me right back in my seat. There were no extra hand controls used in that filming. Okay, now that Nathan has climbed from the back seat back up into the front seat, ah. Ah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to find a spot where we can pull over, and I'm going to let him take control, see what his driving impressions are. Okay. All right. Here we go. I'm passenger. Ah. Woohoo! Hang on. No passengers were harmed in the filming of this video. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Ooh. Oh yeah, and there you feel it. How, you, how, how about that, Nate? I like that. The power band is is really nicely uh, spread out. I mean, it, you just kind of keep going. I, I obviously can't keep going. It's very um, linear the way it. Pulls. We only it's accelerated to fifty five, folks. So, yep. but uh, there was no hesitation. It just pulled all the way through, and I would imagine at slightly higher speeds, you know, on interstate, it would do the same thing all the way up to seventy seventy five. Talking about these seats a minute ago, they have power headrests. You can adjust the back, the, the, the bottom, the lumbar, three position memory. Oh man, you could just sleep in these seats. This is fantastic. They are very comfortable. And they, when, they really are. Uh, when Nathan's driving, these right here, these are grab handles because you need them. <laughs> and these are, you know, some people call them different things, but you usually when I to them and pray that you're going to get out safely. Usually when I ride with Rob, I unscrew those handles. <laughs> oh, so I didn't break that last car. It just came off nope. my hand because I of the just took ramp. them off for you. Okay. <laughs> Without telling you. Gotcha. All right. Well, it's a little truncated ride tonight because it is night and we really like for you to see it in the daytime, but uh, we ran out of daylight. It is the middle of winter after all, and we are so far north that it gets dark at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Well, like 3.01 to be exact. Oh, okay. But Yep, so uh, being that it's dark, I've, of course, missed the driveway. So <laughs> round and round we go. We may be riding for a while longer here. Okay, but, a little uh, bit longer test drive. Yep, there we go. So is, uh, one of the things I like about this car, too, is the uh, anti-locks here. We got, we're got we driving on some pretty snow-packed roads here. And there we go. Nice, safe stop. Nice, safe stop. Keeps the car nice and straight. Did we even bother to mention? I don't remember. We did not. This, this is formatic. This is formatic. It is all-wheel drive. Which is really nice. And, and it, it also has traction control. Trash control. It has the... Um, Oh, if I don't the say it, you don't know what it no, is? No, no, the assistive technology in there with the... With the assistant. The, um, it comes with an assistant. Yeah, they, they're extra, and you have to pay them by the hour. <laughs> it's, and, it, and it's not me, because I get paid double what Rob paid me last time to do right. this. Yes, I gave him a raise. Yep. It's two times zero. It's two times zero is, you know, you know, still zero. But it does have uh, emergency assist braking. It does have the uh, traction control and the stability control. I think you were looking for that. Yeah, there we so go. So we get a little bit of slide, you know, it, it helps straighten you back out. It's really so, nice. So, well, we hope you've enjoyed our first review, despite the fact that our nighttime dri our dri <laughs> our drive was at night. And uh, we hope that, uh, don't forget, don't forget to like and subscribe. Please like our videos. <laughs> Gosh, you can tell we're going to need it. And subscribe <laughs> to our channel. We promise it's going to get better. It is. Thanks for joining us, folks. Thanks. Take care. Rob's laughing at me. Uh, oh, right now because you've got the fan on. <laughs> oh, hi, folks. I'm Rob. This is Nathan. And this is Two Guys in a Ride. Today we're going to take... <laughs>
Oh, don't know what happened there, folks. Hold on. Taking a look out back, we can pop the trunk and we see the rear camera. That was too bad. I couldn't think of what the car